Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube but also up on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. It is Easter Sunday, so happy Easter to you. Uh, I hope you have a lovely day um, filled with whatever Easter is about to you. So I hope you have a fabulous time. Right, before I get into any stitching, I've got a couple of public service announcements that I need to make because you're going to want to know this information and I don't want to risk you sort of bailing out on me halfway through because this is important. So two things, two things. Firstly, Patchwork Rabbit now has a Fabric of the Month Club. This is a fibre on the whim, fibre on a whim, not a, the whim, I've written it down. Fibre on a whim, you can get anywhere from 14 count to 20 count Ada or you can go from 28 to 40 count linen. You can get lots of different sizes, so check it out. Um, when you go onto their website, there's two different ways to pay and it depends on how you want to pay going forward. One's to do with paying on a card, one's to do with paying by PayPal. So make sure you choose the right one. And also, I've got a lot of pointy fingers going on today. You've got to know this. Um, and also, it, when I did mine, it did say on the order, please don't add anything to this order because it affects, it'll affect your monthly total going forward. So if you want to get into the Fabric of the Month Club, just, just put that order through. So there's that. Don't forget also, I'm gonna to have to sit on my pointy fingers. Don't forget also that Patchwork Rabbit have got a Halloween advent coming up as well. You can get that on their website, but not at the same time as your Audrey Fabric Club. And my lovely friend Christina, whilst Iris Naps, has got an exclusive coming out with, now let me get the name right, Homespun Needlework, Cross Stitch and Samplers, I'll write it along the bottom, run by Julie Casave. And her exclusive is coming out on the 10th of April, which is Monday the 10th of April. So if you are interested in just seeing what that exclusive is, getting your hands on it, you need to be a member of that Facebook group, okay? Otherwise, there's no other way of getting it, all right? So go on, find that Facebook group. I'll even put the link to it down below and become a member and then you can see what the exclusive is and then you can make sure that if you want it, you can get it. So that's my two public service announcements. Normal service is going to be resumed now with fewer pointy fingers. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my fingers today. Right, I'm going to hide them under there. So um, the other thing I'd written down on my form was the strike update because somebody had asked me how the strike update was going. Um, we have come to an agreement, the Welsh uh, teachers have come to an agreement with Welsh Government about our pay. They're still working on the workload side of things, but the pay issue has been sorted. So we don't have any more strikes um, planned. Um, the English teachers, and I must admit I don't know where uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland come into this, but I know the English teachers have rejected their deal because I don't think it was as good as ours. Um, so they've rejected their deal and are carrying on with their strike action for another another pay deal. Um, part of the reason I think that we ended up settling um, on ours was A, it was going to be fully funded, which is what everybody had wanted from the beginning. And B, there was going to be no detriment. So if the English teachers managed to secure a better deal, then we would get that deal as well. So that's where we are in Welsh. In Welsh? In Welsh. In Wales we're kind of sorted for the moment. England uh, is still carrying on with their, their strikes and their discussions. So <coughs> I've also still got this little cough but it's not as bad as it was. So I don't think it's going to be the 100 day cough. Let's have a look and see what I've been stitching this week. I had a new start and a finish. Um, I worked a little bit on a couple of ornaments but I hadn't brought it up because I did so little on it and the last time I showed you there wasn't much to report. I'll show you it when it's finished. But I picked this up from Patchwork Rabbit in the week um, because I just loved, what is that? Something that's in the way. I just loved this collector's heart the 2023 collector's heart. Well, of course, I've been looking up to see what the previous ones looked like as well, but I loved this one. And it comes as a kit with the fabric with 
the little button, little square button there, and the floss. Now the floss is amazing, but it's not the colour that it is on the front. Excuse me, rattling. This is the floss, so it's a Cottage Garden Threads leather bound. And that is a pretty good representation. It's a dark red with a little bit of brighter red, but it's mostly dark red. So this has been lightened quite a lot. I'm not mad, I'm not mad at it, but I want you to know that that is, if you're using the called for thread, that is not the color. There might be a few edits in this one, but not as many as last week. So this is where we are. This is where we are. So, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. I have got a couple of little personalizations on here. Um, my flower pot looks slightly different. I wouldn't normally start in the middle, but because I just wanted, I had this piece of fabric sent through, I wanted to make sure that it was sort of in the center of the fabric, just because I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, actually. Um, so I did start in the middle and I started in the middle and I went out that way and sort of round and then wasn't quite right there so I went up and round and I was right there so somewhere I had to do a little something so I decided to just make my uh, plant pot base one row shorter so it didn't really impact any of the letters I think the mistake I made was I was one too high here so I just put an extra little stitch on the bottom there which kind of matches that one um, now when I photographed it it's not obviously sitting that square because I stitch in hand so until I iron it it looks a bit like a rag anyway but um, I did wonder about just doing a mat just getting some nice fabric and backing it and making it into like a little stitching mat or whether I need to frame it because it needs pulling back to square I don't know there's one little thing up in this top corner actually here on this side there's a little extra stitch there can you see it between the two those two prongs on this side there isn't and I thought oh, I wondered if that's a little mistake on the chart but when I looked on the front you can just see it there it's there on the front as well so I left it in I left it in and it is as stitched, well that part is anyway. <laughs> you can't say much with the rest of it. But yeah, it is a much, much darker red. So I'm super pleased with that. I really love stitching it. I think it took me like 24 hours to stitch because it just was so enjoyable. And it was my first sort of proper day of holiday as well. I did two, um, a-level revision sessions on one on Monday one on Tuesday so when I came home on Tuesday night I was like right that is my holiday now so I started this at my craft club and then I um, sort of finished it off the next day because I gave myself a, a good stitchy day that day so that's where we are with that and I need some sky hooks now the other thing that I have been working on is, excuse me, leaning over, is this one. Now she's had a lovely reception from you all. Let me just put that behind there. This is Maria Foskett, 1847. Now I was showing you to her, her to you, last week. And I said to you that she's got in her in her words in her lettering she's got all of her a's up to front and a couple of other letters and some of you were asking whether i was going to keep that in the charting of course yes definitely that's that's part of what makes it so adorable um i have now nicknamed this sampler the duck jug i can't even say it the duck jugglers because when i first saw it advertised i thought they were juggling but they're actually holding birds so they've become the duck 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 jugglers <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be fun for people to say isn't it the duck jugglers there we go so after last week having said oh yeah I've got plenty of different fabrics I could stitch this on and listed off uh, you know several different ones like Havana and um, curry and 
all of that. I actually got as far as putting those fabrics next to the sampler and they were in it. They were far too yellow. So the colour I, I sort of stuck on or decided on was actually just Zweigart Dirty. And I have actually coffee dyed mine as well. I just dunked it in coffee and kept it moving so that it didn't have any, um, uh, I didn't want any mottling on it. And this was the, the colourway that I came up with. It's quite a bit lighter still than the original, but the colours show up on it really, really nicely. And if you wanted it a bit darker, then you could just leave it in the coffee for a bit longer. Now, this is the original Dirty. And as you can see, my coffee hasn't made a massive difference to it. But if you left it longer, you would definitely get a darker fabric in. So you could choose what you wanted there. Now, let's have a look and see. That blue is looking really, really dark there. It's not that dark. It's Weak Style Works Americana, I think. And so that is how she's looking. I've got one of the duck jugglers done, minus her feet, and a good start on the border. Now, what I have yet to do is there's a couple more pinks to add in, and the pinks are okay. I think I've got the pinks right. The purples are gonna be a little bit more challenging because the purple on the front is that kind of faded one there whereas on the back it's that colour so I think most of my colours I've chosen have come from the back some of these really pale ones don't make a difference between the back to the front so I think I'm going to continue on with colours from the back and it will be that kind of really dark purple so I'll need to pick something out but yeah that that blue is not as dark as it looks there but I'm loving this absolutely loving it so I sort of just mapped out the border and then as I've been picking up the colors in inside in this top bit I've just been sort of filling in the border as I go and that makes a lovely a little job because you know you know you've normally got just that that, that much that much left over and so that much is all you need to do one of those little triangles or two of those little triangles so super happy with it I am planning to try and get the model done by the end of the Easter holidays so I've got another week another week to work on her that's a bit better the blues looking a little bit less dominating there there is some of that darker blue down in the bottom section as well so it's not just like a one hit a one hit wonder So I was thinking to myself, actually, while I was stitching this, before I ironed it, I was thinking, oh, do my stitches look nice? You know, is this going to be nice enough for a model? Is it going to look nice? And then part of me was thinking, well, I think my models are like the kind of plus size models in the stitching industry. You see these beautifully, beautifully stitched models and you think, oh, they're lovely. But it's like looking in a catalogue, isn't it? You see all these beautiful size eights and size tens, you think, lovely. And then occasionally you see a plus size model, of which I would definitely fit into that category. And you think, ah, that's what it's really gonna look like. That's what it's really gonna look like. So, loved it. Now I have to see if I can root through and find some more 666. It's that really bright tomato red there. Beautiful, loving it. <laughs> loving it. And it will fit on a fat eighth as well. I did buy a fat quarter, but I trimmed it into a fat eighth to dye it, just in case it went wrong. Right, what else have I got to show you? I've got a little bit of haul to show you. Very, very small amount of haul because, quite frankly, I've had enough haul recently. Um, but I've also got a freebie and I've got some printouts of a couple of recent magazine things that I've really liked because there's been a couple recently. So let's do the freebie. I'm going to pop a picture of the freebie up here. Um, it's from Hands Across the Sea Samplers um, and it was charted by Sandra Moffat, who is one of their designers, one of their ladies who works um, with, uh, with Nicola. And let me see if I can hold it right back. 
I put it in my double sided. It is a Union Jack pin cushion, or that's how they envisage it, for the coronation, which is going to be on the 6th of May. There's two options for the date. You can either have the Roman numerals at the bottom, or you can have the words uh, 6th May, 6th May 2023. So that is a lovely one. I've also seen, um, if you're looking for any kind of um, coronation patterns, the Vivsters has got a really nice coronation pattern on um, on Etsy. I'll see if I can find that one. Caterpillar Cross Stitch have just brought out a, I don't know if it's a limited edition kit, but they've certainly brought out a chart for the coronation, which I'll put up there. And there was also a lovely one on the front of Cross Stitcher magazine um, recently. I think maybe the last issue, so I'll put that up there. So there's quite a few popping up. If you've heard of any more, let me know and we can make sure everybody knows about them. Okay, these are the ones that I have come across in magazines. I'm hoping they've all printed out because there's... I think my mum's pinched some of them. Let's just do Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine and there's just two. I had printed some out from this edition of um, just Cross Stitch magazine. The most recent edition of Cross Stitch, Just Cross Stitch magazine has got some really nice ones in it as well, but I'll save those for next week. The two that I really liked were Spring Parade and also um, Lucy Bean, Rebecca Nolan, Friends Are Like Flowers. And I've got the perfect fabric for that one. The cord for is 36 count grandpa's shop rag linen which i would imagine it sounds a bit like an ex due design one but it doesn't say it came from lap lapin loops or lapan loops but if you get punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine you'll find all this information anyway so there's that one <clears throat> and And I'll show you the others next week, remind me. Because I've got something to show you this week that I've been planning to show you for like two weeks. So <clears throat> all these things come around. Talking of things from last week, I have here the stack of charts that I am giving away in my 12,000 subscriber giveaway. So if you want to get your hands on one of these charts or one of my charts, because they form part of the giveaway as well, go back to last episode and you can have a look at that as well. There is also several pins from Jersey Girl Stitches on offer as well, all of which are not playing ball now. Let me see if I can find some which are sitting nicely in their bag. There we go. So if you're interested in winning any of those, go and have a look at my floss tube from last week. I'm going to put those down there because I guarantee as soon as I try and put it back there we will have an avalanche. Little bit of haul then, little bit of haul. <clears throat> I picked up some linen for a model stitch that I need to do. This is fibre on a whim 36 count silver fox and it almost matches my top. It is actually kind of a greeny bluey grey so I'm going to be doing that one and I picked up a couple of a couple of threads I just need to pause a second I also had a little bundle whoops from Lakeside Needlecraft I'm going to show you a couple of bits I got from there now I got I did have two but I've now only got one King spool of the thread colour that I'm using for Ragnarok, which is one, two, three, two. And I've got two of those, one in my hand, one on the floor. I also picked up just a little commemorative piece. Their needle minder for the coronation. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, whether it's gonna to be too shiny but it's a little pin for the um, coronation. And there we go. The 
you can hear my daughter in the background. She is having a little cry, but her dad's with her. That's why I went to see if I was required, but everything is in hand. In fact, I was shooed away. Um, I picked up a couple of skeins of Erin Goen Emerald for the Trees of Koga Nature, which I want to do. And they also sent me this. Now this was an accidental send and it is going back. I phoned Kate and said that um, it arrived accidentally. So I am going to post it back, but I said I would show it um, before I post it back. This is a piece of 14 count Ada and it's opalescent. I don't know if you can see. And it has got the, apart from that bit of fluff, it has got a larger version of the uh, design that's on the needle minder. So I paid for the needle minder and, and I bought that. This came extra but it is going back. But I said that I'd show it to you just in case anyone was interested in grabbing some. some. Um, it doesn't say what size it is but it's a lakeside exclusive. Um, it doesn't say but it's got four of the insignias on it. So I shall fold that back up, put it back carefully in the bag, and then that one will be going, going back. And then on that subject, Marks and Spencers are doing their coronation tins, like they did their Platinum Jubilee tins last summer. Um, I, I have tidied away the shortbread from this one already, it didn't take long, but that's a lovely purple colour. And the very last thing that I've been meaning to show you for a couple of weeks is the most recent Floss Club, no, Fabric Clubs <laughs> from Fox and Rabbit. Um, I'm very lucky, Karen and Bren send me the neutral and the colour. This is the neutral this time, Mudslide which is fabulous. I think red is going to look amazing on that. Uh, amazing. And this one's called Pacific. Love that. So a little bit shorter than, than normal this week, but next week I'm going to be announcing the giveaway winners. So if you do want to go and enter for those, pop back onto last week's video. Plus hopefully I'll have a sampler finish and who knows what I'll have been up to. I'll see you next week. Stay classy, Stitchers.